Hello everyone. I'm sure you all must have completed your work of Lonely Heart. Today we'll start with a new chapter, the five orange pips. I've already written it here, you can see. Right, so this is the story about Sherlock Holmes. I'm sure you must have heard this name before as well. He's a well-known detective and most of his uh, cases were solved somewhere between 82 and 90s. So let's go through this story. It's a nice story. It, it is again a kind of a suspense story. Right? I'll start here. It was a stormy September night when Holmes and I sat on either side of the fireplace. So who was sitting with Holmes? His assistant. They both were sitting on the side of the fireplace. Both were engrossed in reading. So they were busy reading and suddenly they felt I'm sorry, they heard the front bell ring. So somebody must have come. It must be a serious case. Nothing less would bring a man out on such a night. Now, Holmes, he observed, he was a detective. So he observed that, of course, it has to be something very, very, very important that a person has come out in such a stormy night. The man who came, in was young. I want you to mark it, underline it. It is important. About 2 and 20. 2 and 20 means he was 22 years old, well dressed and with refinement in his bearing. Means the way he was dressed, the way he had come, he looked as a refined man. He held a streaming umbrella. Streaming means the water was actually dripping from his umbrella and wore a waterproof cloth. He looked pale and anxious. He was pale and anxious. He was worried. The young man apologized for bringing in rain and storm into the room. How he brought in the rain and storm? Because of his wet dress. I have come for advice. So he told them that he has come for advice and there is some major friend of his who must have told that Sherlock Holmes can solve any mystery, any case. Well, at this, he says, it is true that I have been generally successful. So, of course, Sherlock Holmes had always been successful. He said, yes, of course, I can solve your case. Give me the details of your case. Now, you have to remember his name was John Openshaw. My name is John Openshaw. My father, Joseph, had a small factory at Coventry which he enlarged at the time of the bicycle. He was successful and retired with a comfortable income. Now he's talking, he, here he is talking about his father, that his father was Joseph. He was successful. He had his work going on. Now it says, he says here that he was, he retired with a comfortable income. Who retired? His father. And after selling his factory, my father's brother, that means his uncle, John's uncle, Elias, Emir okay, he uh, was the one who came from America when he was young. He fought in Jackson's army, later rose to be a colonel. Now here he's talking about his father. He was you know, uh, happily retired, but his uncle who was in America, maybe he must have come back. He, okay, here he says in 1869, 1870, he came back to England and bought a small state. Okay, now his uncle came back, he also bought some state. His dislike of Negroes and Republican policy is giving, in giving them freedom made him leave the state. He had a fiery temper and became aggressive when angry. He kept to himself, had no friends and did not even meet his brother. Who was his brother? His father. So his uncle was really aggressive, fiery in nature. He never liked the blacks, right? And because of his temperament, he, well, you know, he used to keep himself away from the general public. But he was fond of me. But his uncle was really fond of John. When I was 12 or so, he begged my father to let me live with him. 
So maybe his uncle was too much in love with John and when John was only 12 years old, he requested John's father, that is his brother Joseph, to let John live with his uncle. He taught me to play okay, backgammon and draught and made me carry orders to his serving. Now maybe he was, you know, uh, he used to stay with, with his uncle. So uncle he used to play with games with him and he used to teach him some good things as well. By 16, I became the master of his house and kept all his keys. So here, finally, when John was 16 years old, he became somewhat the master. He used to carry all the keys of his uncle. We'll continue the rest in the next video. Thank you.